Here I am to discuss about the civil service examination, how to choose geography optional or any option, what is the criteria? If we have chosen geography option, what should be the strategy followed by the aspect? So let me start our discussion. So why and how we have to choose the geography optional or any other optional for the UPSC civil service examination? As we are aware that in the mains there are seven papers which are marks are counted for the final selection, isn't it? Now, out of these seven papers, uh, two are from the optional papers, and that's any optional you can choose as offered by the UPSC A, A, isn't it? So, out of the option, people are going with the, the science topics or with the technological topics, medical topics, or these objects like the humanities. Now, here is the importance of choosing optional. Like if you look at the final mark traits of an aspirant who get recommended, their total mark is total what they have scored in the mains marks plus the interview marks. That will constitute the entire merit of the aspirant. So the mains mark is around 1750 marks. I am focused on this. So out of the 1750 marks, optional papers value is around 500 marks maximum one can score so that means it's great weightage if you look at the mark sheet of the all toppers so they are getting good marks in the optionals if without doing optionals you cannot set in good rank in the upsc so one has to choose wisely their optional papers isn't it now if you look into account uh, the what should be the criteria used by the aspirants to choose their optionals. What is the background on which they can choose? First, they should have a clear-cut interest in the subject. Interest is most important. If you have interest, you can read, you can reread, you can uh, interlink with the current update from one topic to another. You can produce the good analysis and use it in the different papers apart from optional you can use it properly in the general studies so you have to allocate good time and the, and the time to the subject you only can be able to to allocate when you have the great interest in the subject take the interest and whatever the subject is interesting to you choose that as an option now question arises: you have uh, interest on your know, basis of your educational background when educational background become the interest so there are three types of students which comes from the universities and colleges one from come from the science technical backgrounds or medical sciences or from engineering background or science graduate and postgraduate one kind of people which are technical went off minus second kind of people is come from arts arts commerce management part of them so now how they make a choice now that become a difficulty for the uh, for the student because you can see there are some popular subjects so second criteria mainly used by the successful candidates are is their safety what do you mean by safety those subjects which are popular are considered to be more safer the reason is because of scaling so so just to avoid the scale down marks in the smaller subjects like the engineering subjects or the science subject let me give an example of my I used to appear from two options in my time. One was the geography, another was the physics. And the physics score was very low. The reason is what you did and what you get, there is a difference because of scale up and scale down. In the smaller subjects, like which are technical in nature, you get a plus 50. If you are scaled up, you get minus 50 and scale down. Per paper, I am talking about there are two papers you have to attempt in optional. So as a result, you may be plus minus 100 in that case. But if you are going with the popular subjects, then the number of applicants are more in, more in that. So as a result, scale up and scale down, the variation is not much. Per paper, you can have a plus minus, but called by totality in both the papers, the difference may arise around 10 marks. So that means whatever you are doing in your, uh, in your papers, you are scoring finally that only. So nearly a plus minus 10. So that's the case. Uh, the your popular subjects become the most safe because of scaling is not creating the difference, and which is happening with these technical 
subject. So I uh, I asked all the students go with these very popular subjects. So in the popular subject, there are many subjects are there. Okay, like geography is one of them. The sociology is another. Okay, or the optionals like the public ed is there, or the subjects like the ESIR is existing, history is there, isn't it? Or the language papers, languages are there, or we call that literature. We can opt any of the subjects because they are more safe in nature. Why do we are calling safe? They are scorable actually. Okay, now third criteria is the score. Those subjects we are scoring or those subjects we are untrained. As for my understanding of UPSC, optionals and the final recommended set candidates, the trend is that every subject there is a selection. Maybe of technical, non-technical, humanities, arts, management, or science, or from engineering background, all there is a scoring. They are highly scored. Everyone is scoring. But the number of candidates who appeared is less in the technical. So they are being affected by scaling only. So as a result, choose those optional which are scoring and those subjects which are scoring are in that trend. So go follow this. For example, geography, every year around 5,000 people is writing mains when it is in peak. When it is not in peak, around 3,500 aspirants appear every year with the geography option. When such a scenario exists, so that's become important. Or is the, the percentage of selection. So the trend is the percentage of selection with every option. Now there is every option people get selected. We look at the number of people appear with the geography and finally they recommend it. The percentage wise is the highest among all the options I'm talking. And so last to last year it was around 6% uh, to the total. And now it is increased to what for 7% in the last here and this trend is increasing only. So that means geography as an option is picking up slowly, slowly among the aspirant. And these are the criteria. And fifth and the last criteria which aspirant used to choose the optional is the how does it help in the journal studies? The role of the optionals in the journal studies papers. We have to write three journal studies paper excluding the four ethics okay even some people say that all the four papers might be what is the role so if you look at the geography geography has a role in the at least in the three general studies paper general studies one general studies second general studies third there is a great role so every paper you can score good marks it's like in gs1 around 120 marks used to come and sometimes maybe extended to 150 also maximum and the minimum is around 90 marks so it varies from 90 to 150 marks and the gs2 around 50 to 60 marks question you can attempt and gs3 again around 120 marks you can attempt this is about general studies if you look go, go with the main papers and essay one of the essay paper has geographical in nature you can attempt that also okay so as a result you can attempt around 150 marks actually you can get scored so the two two essays around 125 each okay so you can score between 120 to 150 marks from the essay scoring also scoring get increased so that is the important uh, criteria which is being used by the aspirant how does it help in general studies this six and one more criteria is nowadays students are using called relevancy okay is the subject is relevant relevancy means are is usable in their daily life when you become a a civil servant answer is yes the geography is the one of the option where this criteria is also been fulfilled it's highly relevant like wherever you are working as a civil servant you have to solve the problems like drought you have to solve the problems of regional development you have to solve the issues of related to the floods isn't it your the problems of rural development urban settlements etc 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 so and that would make you a relevant 
subject actually. You can correlate with this. And so interest also get developed. Now, to prove the testimony that people get selected with geography option, so there are mark sheets of few of the recommended aspirants. Suppose uh, in this mark sheet, you can see is one of the top scholar scorer in geography option. Pratham Kausik in geography paper one, he got 166. And paper two, he got 161. Total is around more than 327 marks around he got it. So look at that. So how much marks one can should score an option to get recommended? At least 280 plus this he or she should be getting to finally getting the top 100 ranking. So this is a, one of the testimony. Pratham got 327. You can also get that. Abhishek Chabe also like if you look at that 153, 142. If you got this, it's like 295 marks. 295 marks he got. Now it's uh, like Swetha Chauhan. Paper 1, paper 2, if you look at this, she also get two, 326 marks plus. Okay, if you look at this, Junaid Ahmed, he stood third rank, like 148, 173. So this is also getting around 300 and, okay, 21 marks, around 321 marks. He scored. He scored in the geography option, so it stood third rank all over India. So, Swami Pandey, similar situation arise about 300. Okay, paper one 156, paper two 158. So, if you go with this totality, she got around 314 marks. Is it 314 marks? So, there are many students of mine also got scored above 300. So, the requirement. To get into the Lavasna campus or this Lal Badu Shastri National uh, Administrative Academy, so you have for an optional requirement is how much? Get into the students optional. Papers together, both paper one and paper two of optional, total score in optional should be above 300, around 300 or more. If you're getting plus, any plus that is giving you a better rank in the. So, why do you choose geography optional? I, I think by now some areas get very much clear. So geography is an optional which is satisfying the maximum criteria which is to be chosen by any option for the UPSC means combination. So what is the criteria? So what is an other merits you have to go through when you choose geography optional or you enjoy that merits <coughs> by cho choosing the geography optional. One of the important merit is that here paper one, it's called fundamentals of geography, including physical part and the human part in section B, is highly interrelated with the paper two, that is called Indian geography. Both the papers, right? Both papers could be used and interchange. The knowledge of paper one could be used in paper uh, two, your hard work get reduce and whatever the misconceptions spread about the geography option is lengthy, it will be compensated in this way. And second method of compensation is its role in the journal studies paper. Role in journal studies paper. If you look at the entire length of the course of journal studies, you are looking at a lot of time. So the 40% of the journal studies you can complete by geography option. I will be demonstrating in in, 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 for, in next slides that how the different parts of the optional of paper one and paper two is used up in the general studies. If you look at that Indian geography, physical world geography or the human geography or the disaster management, agriculture, climate change, even infrastructural topics like the road, transport, power, energy, all has been there actually, all is in there. So, the helping in GS1, GS2, and GS3 a lot, a lot of 40% selective self is covered because the nature of this optional is interdisciplinary in nature. Interdisciplinary. So, what do you mean interdisciplinary? So, geography as an optional, when you choose, you are not reading only geography, you are crisscrossing 
among different subjects like you have political understanding uh, international relationship understanding certain technical aspects you might get open social geography you read urbanization you read you read about the disasters agriculture climate change and so on to so enter so when you are reading from different dimensions what will happen your scope of performing better in essay in general studies and in interview and real life after being recommended as civil servant will be better and better that's called interdisciplinary your answer writing skills will get improved every where another advantage is those who are coming from technical background is the language is the big issue so they are not so much good in literature or a part like english or the original language so they want those optionals where they can safely write whatever they comes into their mind and directly they can present so so geography suits this condition too here the aspirants can take the advantage of the subject is independent of language independent of independent of language why i am saying this subject is independent of language because because you are using diagrams if you are using maps okay or most of the writings are direct here you need not to worry about so metaphors use here highly conceptual every optionals uh, scoring is only possible when you are technically sound so they are checking your technical expertise in the subject and those who are coming from the technical background they take the advantage of it and those who are coming from the humanities background they also take the advantage in the geography option why i am saying this because nature of geography is it's a semi science for some okay and for some it is a semi human it is also so there is that's what two branches of geography one is the physical geography second branch is the human geography so both kind of aspirants can avail this option so from those who come from technical background scientific tempo they can get this physical geography they can take a lead here and those who are coming from humanities and they can take a lead here and those as friend who can mix the physical and the human aspects of the geography their score is far more better than the other so it is attractive to all the aspirants who are coming from wide diverse educational background either from science graduates post graduates or from arts and commerce so you can opt uh, these geography options attractive to both and it is conceptually correct that means those people who think they are something they are conceptually they do not work on memory please come and join the geography optional classes that's the one thing and read on your own also if you are able to do it now the role of a geography optionals become easy when you're looking into the answer writing so large number of current affairs you have to read already you are reading for the general studies papers okay already you are reading for your interview all you are reading for your prelims too that current affairs knowledge is put into use here the question come on marine resources you can write the latest updates come under the question come on the critical minerals that is a part of the geography question comes on population that is a part of geography so although you are reading entire indian geography in the general studies okay the paper 2 of indian geography is completely used up here that's what geography optional is is uh, good for or all those who are performing good in the general studies so that means current affairs is updated general studies are updated the information what you have learned in the optional paper 1 and paper 2 is completely put into use another advantage is the selection ratio like if you look at the selection ratio here and it is very high and it's increasing in the recent trend so selection ratio in geography optional is what the rising trend is being observed rising trend 
So that means like the area was three percent like ten years back. Now it's become four percent. Now five percent, six percent, and latest last data speaks that seven thousand. And because of the number of students increasing every year in this, so so earlier like uh, minimum is three thousand people is writing with the geography option per year, and it's increased to. To here, they to four thousand aspirant. Now it is moving towards what? Five thousand aspirant as a peak. So out of fourteen thousand seven hundred aspirants, if four thousand to five thousand are writing with geography option, look at the number of people appeared. That means it is scoring. It is highly scoring and ensuring the good rank. Why I am telling scoring because of mapping, because of Relevance and practicality of this subject. So it's highly relevant actually. The subject is highly what called relevant in the life of civil servant. So you are aspiring to be this. You can be be opting for geography option. That's what it is for the best student. Geography optional is most chosen subject. Now question arises. Okay. How to score three hundred plus marks in the optionals to secure a place to Labasna? So the for that you have to lay down your strategy. You have to lay down what called proper strategy. Strategy for getting recommended. Finally, so what is the strategy? You must know what EPSC is asking in the geography optional. Then only like the other aspirants who scored three twenty, three twenty five, three thirty, he. A, what what they are doing? You have to do the same thing, okay? And I will make sure that you are following this. So, in, in one important criteria is first important requirement is understand the syllabus. First, understand the the syllabus. Strategy is totally depending on how beautifully, how comprehensively you understand the syllabus given by. UPSC of both the papers, paper one and paper two. Paper one talked about the fundamentals of geography for physical for section A and the human geography for for section B. There are two sections in paper one. Section A five units and section B. Also, five units. Section A deal with the physical geography, and the section B deals with the human geography. Total ten units of paper one should be understood, and the connection between them. The first thing, where to focus, how much to focus, and paper to deal with the Indian geography. So, so here in the Indian geography. A UPSC syllabus consists of again ten units. Totally, you have to prepare twenty units. Okay, understand all twenty units. So, if you see the past year question papers, then you can lay down a more a better strategy or the approach to complete the papers in the best way. So that means the second uh, strategy. Will arise from the past year question papers. So I have prepared the trend since 1991 till 2022. I prepared the a uh, on the basis of you know like you know one you know two you know three till the you know ten of paper one and similarly for paper. Two also, so that means past year question paper trend analysis you have to do. So better you are in the trend analysis, you know the idea where the questions is being asked in the recent time. Okay, and second, if you practice all the past year question papers at least from ten to fifteen years, then eighty percent of the syllabus get covered. Eighty percent of syllabus get. Covered on your own, actually. Okay, 
So this is mostly the nature you will find it's repetitive. Or the form may that change the topic remain the same. Okay, so the past year question paper is this. You can get from me the entire trend analysis and the question bank also. You will get the question bank completely in note by in note from me. So on the basis of that, you try to make your strategy. So what is the strategy? So before getting the into the details of the strategy, please remove all your mis misconceptions, doubts, rumors related to the geography options. What are the rumors? And that become the, the negative side of geography options for the same size. And one of the important misconception is, is the lengthy subjects. I totally agree it is a lengthy subject. So take long, long time. So how much long? It does not mean a year it will take. Okay. So, so compared to the other smaller subject, one month extra. So lengthy subjects totally around maximum is five month you can complete. Around 300 and hours of time you have to allocate for it. You can make it easy. So if you are giving extra one month, okay, and it is ensuring the entire selection, then you must go with it. So if you have chosen a small subject, it will be done within three months, but you are not able to understand, you get every time you get stuck up in the mains and the cycle repeated again and again. So there will be no fruits from smaller subjects that comes out. Lengthy subjects give the is selection. So please go with the length. So length should not be the criteria of selecting optional. Please remove this concept about the lengthy subject, you can do it, you cannot able to do it. So people following the longer path and getting better selected than those who are taking shortcuts. So one principle in PSA is avoid shortcuts, so even though you have to read a lot. Second misconception is this subject is highly technical, how to memorize it, the so memory, so that means Memory means they have to work on memory. A lot of facts and figures are existing in geography. So now facts and figure means mountains, peaks, valleys, names. You have to remember a lot. Okay. Now, please, anyone can read the mountains whose height is very, very tall. For example, in Himalayas, there are peaks uh, of above 4,000 meters. The number is above 4,000. Then even can mug it up, answer is no. So never relied on memory and facts. Okay. Although whatever facts you are reading in general studies or what is coming with the concept, use that only. And, and this will be updated as for the current affair. So and if you are good in the memory, it will be born for it. The prelims only, not for the mains. Clear or not? So memory and facts mainly work for your, for your uh, what call as prelims examination not for the means and the means what they are checking is not your memory or fact your conceptual clarity and this is the subject which are working on concepts and technical not on your or just sideway writing another misconception about this optional is the material is not available or teachers are not there or how you are going to complete selections are not happening another rumor is about not scoring no much selection nowadays. No much selection now nowadays from this optional is happening. So why do this as, uh, opt for geography optional then if it is not scoring? This is also a rumor. This is also a misconception. I already told you there are people who are scoring above three hundred plus marks. And there are and the toppers are getting above 320 plus 2. And this is like the other good optional people who are getting recommended. Okay, even more than that, and it becomes scoring because of map, it becomes scoring because of the technical nature, because of the diagrams you can draw here, the writing part will be plus. Another misconception about the geography optional is. Like the discrete paper one and paper two both are independent you have to do separately no both the papers are interlinked you can use it 
and and people think geography is nowadays not much questions come from prelims so it is not important you see environment you know disaster management you know agriculture you know economic infrastructural projects all is connected to geography so this is also a remit is a right that also so i recommend strongly go with the geography option now go into the details of each paper you know why you know how we can prepare for this now as according to the syllabus first strategy we should follow what we do syllabus all 20 units second step is just do the answer writing practice wherever the content is missing third step is only practice the the probable questions and do the validation in each uh, coming time when you do this ensure this then you get score mark so start mixing paper 1 with paper 2 physical with the human current with the uh, the conceptual uh, things then your marks would be there and try to in the one diagram one map with every one single portion if the portion is longer like 20 mark you can in the two two maps also by doing this exercise your marks in the option get rise and it will be above 320 marks also possible if you want to be in the top list adopt the strategy and never hide from doing hard work and you although are doing hard work but follow the right approach so let's see the paper 1 section a a the physical geography okay so physical geography consists of five units and the human geography consists of another five units question is why these units are like this so if you understand the topics uh, of optionals you can easily say let me go into the details of it why the syllabus design is like this so if you look at the paper 1 and paper 2 both so let's try focusing on paper 1 now paper 1 design is why 20 why so, 10 in our paper 1 why 10 in our paper 2 and what is the connection between them if you see the paper 1 has divided into 10 in our consists of 10 in our divided into two section section a and section b and section a basically deals with the physical geography okay and section b deals with the human geography xj means the human geography so the five units here and five units here all has equal weightage in the exam but how to score this so paper 1 is dealing with the geography principle so what is the definition of geography bachu geography basically deals with the man environment relationship man environment relationship so the study of man environment relationship is only called as geography so this is a geography definition if in this into account we are applying it so one side is man so human geography means man and the a environment is the physical geography entire you physical job pay become so the two things you have written one is man second is environment their relationship is only called geography so how five units in environment or in the physical geography arise so whatever surrounds you is the environment so the what surrounds you is land air water and when land air and water meets life and life and land air water is interacting so that ecological system arise and that will constitute the entire environment okay so so as a result physical geography is nothing but environmental studies so in that we are dividing to types of disciplines or five sub parts of physical geography It's technical study of land the lithosphere or also called as what geomorphology 
जियो का मतलब लैंड मॉर्फ मीन्स दी फॉर्म लॉजी मीन स्टडी मीन्स जियोमोफोलॉजी मीन्स द स्टडी ऑफ लैंड फॉर्म्स द लैंड फॉर्म्स इज क्रिएटेड बाई इंडोजेनेटिक एंड एक्सोजेनेटिक फोर्सेज लैंड फॉर्म इज क्रिएटेड बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्शन ऑफ अदर लैंड फॉर्म्स डेवलपमेंट फैक्टर्स इज इंड लाइक क्लाइमेट स्लो okay etc etc so there are theories created uh, explain it like the plate tectonic theories continental drift isn't it and the slope development theories so this is your syllabus of unit number 1 isn't it so unit 1 is this the factor controlling what land form development endogenetic exogenetic forces origin evolution of the earth crust fundamental of geomagnetism physical condition of earth interiors so the mountain building you can explain by plate tectonic and old method called geosyncline continents are not stationary so this concept of continental drift and with the moving one and is the another not only the continent but the land also called plate tectonic movements isn't it and the land is vertically balanced because of isostatic balance otherwise big mountains are not going to stand so there are large number of geological hazards you can experience like volcanicity earthquake tsunami you can also explain by plate tectonic concepts or other reasons so theoretically there are or concept like geomorphic cycles of landscape development or slope development or even every any land has a long history of denudation means the erosion weathering then in the past also the land has sculptured but again get uplifted again get eroded so the entire history of of denudation of the land called denudation chronology that you can apply mainly on the peninsular india as an example not much in the himalayas isn't it so how the river is creating the land form that is called channel morphology or the end product of cyclo erosion he call it erosional surface like pani plain pan plain or it's plain or the pedi plain given by the king or devas or king so whole theories of landscape development is based on the endogenetic and exogenetic forces okay and the new theories of landscape development is nothing but slow modification theories only so the knowledge of geomorphology is put into use in hydrology or economic mineral identification of environmental management so from where you can complete geomorphology better to read geomorphology by savender singh okay savender singh is the better source for geomorphology so most of the physical geography you relied on savender singh only now guys land is surrounded by the air or atmosphere and the atmospheric studies then technically we call climatology that can become climatic logic so here weather patterns you can study so what weather patterns how the weather and pattern arise first is the difference between the weather and climate also long term average of 30 to 50 years we call climate if the day to day variation in atmospheric condition we call weather so how weather and climate is determined by certain climate and weather parameters like temperature pressure isn't it when cloud formation rainfall and so on like that so as a result long term average get maintained we have temperature builds pressure builds and the energy to control the climate of any place is from the solar radiation energy the heat come from the sun incoming radiation from the sun we call insulation and and if this energy keep on coming so heat budget of the earth is an increase amount it has to balance so the incoming energy should be outgoing in the form of terrestrial long waves ir rays so the incoming equal to outgoing reduce heat budget and wherever there is an imbalance in the heat budget and the biggest heat balance is found between equatorial surplus heat and polar temperature so the longest and the biggest atmospheric cycle generate between equator and poles called as the atmospheric circulation headly cell ferrel cell polar cell you can read there and okay some location air is stable some air some location air is unstable what do you mean by this it simply means the 
the air where it is wherever it is rising vertically upward we call air is unstable and unstable air is due to the heating due to the cyclonic disturbance thunderstorm activity any kind of storm is due to the atmospheric instability okay and this produce cloud rainfall and so on so now whenever air unable to rise vertically upward no convectional process is so strong so no moisture get uplifted in contrary these situations are happening it's producing what air become stable air is not able to rise air and above subsidence produce dry weather condition most of the permanent atmospheric stable areas become desert actually so atmospheric meteorological scientists generally talked about atmospheric instability that is uh, talking about why the weather is getting disturbed okay the wind system that control the weather conditions are permanent wind like planetary winds or the monsoonal seasonal winds or local winds or upper atmospheric winds called jet stream recent time we might have heard the news about the jet streams causing heat wave the jet streams are responsible for indian monsoon western disturbance or the bomb cyclones in the winter season so jet stream plays an important role so the three dimensional condition of the air surrounding us become air masses and cold and warm air mass meet cause in frontogenesis formation of temperate cyclones while the temp tropical cyclones develop over warm water bodies today the intensity and frequency of tropical temperate cyclones is on increase due to climate change and the rainfall patterns is varies if you go from equator to poles rain is on decrease if we move from coastal to the interiors rainfall is on decrease this we study as a rainfall distribution patterns now why the rainfall took place that give the types maybe convectional rain cyclonic rain or called as the rain caused by the relief feature called as orographic rain and this weather patterns of on the whole is explained on the basis of meteorological data on temperature rainfall and it is plotted on the graph the ground corresponding to the vegetation map and these concept called as climatic classification of the world and three major scholars are in the syllabus Köppen's classification on white and the three warthas classification and now the water like that air is under circulation and that is called hydrological cycle so because of climate change hydrological cycle getting speeded up which resulting into changes in the rainfall pattern and most important topic which is used completely in your gm studies to called global climatic change and role and response to men so we have talked about climate change mitigation adaptation policy and the knowledge of climate is applied okay urban climate you heard of it urban climate is more warmer than the rural areas so this branch is important your yeah. climate so if these are two basic units those who command geomorphology and climatology they have a strong uh, position in the physical job third is smaller in water surrounding the earth so the maximum water is in the ocean so this branch become oceanography So here we talked about oceans, relief features, properties of ocean, marine resources, maritime zones, unclos, and so on. Life. That means life part means plants and animals. So distribution on the earth become biogeography. Become what called biogeography. Then land and air, water and the life all is meeting. That branch become environmental geography. It, this. you know fifth you know it is generally used in the used in the general studies also as the environment part so all five units become with geography to so that this all five units become the physical geography become the geography called physical geography take command over these five units you can command the rest of the other units of paper one as well all the 10 units of paper true also so please first focus areas should be these three ins and these could be done with the rest of the other areas so focus should be on focus areas are first three 
it consumes the maximum time, allocate maximum time to this in study. Maximum time for understanding. When you understand these three you notes, know, understand with the concept. So, what are the sources of other other or branches of biography? So, morphology we have seen separate individual textbook written by Sabinda Singh, similarly with the climatology. Climatology also you can read what called Savinder Singh. Okay, sir. Climatology by Savinder. Singh also good textbook. Or even you already have a BS. Lal is this. I personally say Savinder Singh, you read it, it's sufficient. Oceanography is Savinder Singh. You can read again. Separate textbook, Oceanography by Savinder Singh. Or Sharma and Vartal is one textbook on oceanography, it's also good. Okay, in biogeography, no need to buy anything. In environmental geography, when you buy, buy biogeographical concept is there. Otherwise, you can get some interesting textbook in biogeography as well as environmental geography. So that means environmental geography by Savinder Singh as well as biogeography by Savant this thing you go through it. Okay, so here question from the textbooks is not much focused. Here the current affairs plus the internet you use it. Okay, or focused on my class notes which is developed topic by topic. That's the only approach. Now in section B is human geography. In human geography, the focus area is human itself. So, what are the topics you are reading? Population, number of people, the population distribution, demography, that's what we call demography. People is staying somewhere to become settlement geography. People is working in some place to earn their life, livelihood. So, this concept called economic geography. So what are the work done, fisheries, primary activities like fisheries, forestry, agriculture, mining, or secondary activities like industries, or tertiary activities like trade, to support the primary, secondary activities, you know, transport, networks, power, etc. So all become a part of economic geography. Okay, in the process of economic development, some become uh, progressive, some become regressive, some remain backward. To ensure the uniform and speedy rate of development is the concept of regional planning and development. Regional planning and development. So, the, being a civil servant, the role of a geographer is become important. Most of the time, you have to plan the resource, redistribute the resource from, from the advanced region to backward region. Isn't it? So now in the process, two units become very important. So how you push the region development, understand settlement or population. So one unit here is called models and theories. Models and theories, which is more technical and try to explain population distribution, settlement distribution pattern, economic structures, and the models for regional growth and development. So models and theories become important. Okay, now these become the other units of the human geography. Now, human geography is connected to physical geography, or physical geography is connected to the physical geography to human geography, human to what is the connection? So, geographical perspective is that connection. Connection is nothing but called geographic perspective. Perspective meaning is what called geographical thoughts. Okay, so one thought is who control whom, who influence whom, who create whom. The answer comes out to be environment is controlling, influencing in the men. So whatever or you see as a cultural thing, all is a byproduct of environmental conditioning, and this viewpoint. Call as environmental determinism. Call as what called environmental what called determinism. This is a deterministic view, isn't it? So that means 
region is developed because of resource in load area and the region is poor because of deficient resource one is strong because of the nature one is weak because of nature it is like this acceptance of status quo so man become inactive in a deterministic approach so the geographical thinkers thought like their men should be doing something themselves okay to improve and develop so for the developmental pur- purposes human become active when human become more and more active then men start affecting environment so what is the thought process by these kind of people not the, the men become what active agent in the nature or in the environment when men become more and more active agent in the environment what happened to the environment so environmental degradation will take place at the cost of development and this kind of thought is called possibility why because these men think that nature or environment offer many possible options and who has to choose from this many possible options offered by the nature or environment the choice has to be made by the men so men is making the choice so that means we call the possible choice the best possible choice made by the men depending on not only environmental condition but depending on its cultural characteristics or cultural trade of that society of these people who are there living so and culture determined by technology knowledge isn't it the capital they possess the population pressure and so on that is called the culture the culture say now we have to create good agriculture in the dry desert areas environment said no deterministic view said no but the possibilistic view say is possible and best example is israel you might have seen africa remain poor in spite of the resource rich area isn't it not because of cultural backwardness okay they are not able to capitalize the resource other countries coming and exploiting then because of the culture you can explain the development on the basis of cultural traits so nowadays the society is becoming more and more which thought possibilistic thought and this approach is also called possibilism approach in studying geographical areas where the role of man become more and more so what is an advantage for with the possibilistic to ensure development but there is everything is not positive there is a one negative side called as environmental degradation the most of the problem which is caused today due to the development or possibilistic thought process is that like environmental degradation climate change pollution resource exploitation insecurity okay to different environments are there. so so nowadays from 1970s growth and development cannot be sustained we call limit to growth and this concept is is a balance between deterministic and the possibilistic thought called as sustainable development so today the world is stop and go determinism call it sustainable development. so all become topics so paper one is like this and same knowledge is used in paper two so i have given you the sources of physical geography now moving to the sources of human geography or section b of paper one most important focused area in the human geography is you know one with perspective human geography and the you know fifth called as models theories and laws of human geography so in the perspective in human geography you develop the thought process that means how geography as a discipline develop how geography is a discipline developed when in this process not only how geography is a discipline developed in the world but also the different thought processes thought related to geography development as is what is the subject matter what is the research and developmental approach what is an inputs what an output all become geographical thoughts that's what this unit 
is called as perspective in human geography. So what are the different perspectives? Aerial differentiation. That means area, one area, objective of every geographer is to find out the differences between the area. And the focused area is not similarity, it is similar. In this approach called aerial differentiation. The spatial characteristic of area, <laughs> the geographer should study. Now, in the regional synthesis, uh, what you keep on reading one region, the next region, and third region, in every region, you are focusing one subject or one topic you focus, you can create a regional synthesis. Okay. Now, dichotomies and dualism means the differences in the thought. The way which we did just now, as an example, like uh, environmental determinism versus what? The possibilism. That's what the different schools of thought comes which appear to be opposite to each other. So it becomes dichotomous and dualism. So this branching, rebranching, sub-branching of geography discipline happens because of this. This is called dichotomies and dualism. You will study this as one topic. Today, the environmental studies or the role of man in affecting environment, affecting inv affect, environment affecting men and vice versa called environmentalism. Here also possibility and determinism you can use. Today, sustainable development is the environmentalist movement also. Even due to the incoming of the people from sciences, engineering and other statistics, maths, so they their method of studies get changed and they become more quantitative, more database analysis. So this branch uh, this approach in geographical studies in research work called quantitative revolution and output of quantitative revolution is locational analysis. The model theory start emerging and uh, criticism of quantitative revolution methods become what uh, called humanistic behavioral and human welfare approach. This is called radical approach. So in the environment, in the quantitative approaches, human angle was neglected. So the new branch of 1970s onwards start focusing on radical behavioral human aspects. Okay, in the cultural part, uh, different aspects are there. One is general cultural regions of the world, six regions we divide. And next is uh, cultural means linguistic differences or religious differences or developmental differences. So HDI is the best indicator to study that. Now, in the, from where you can read perspective in human geography for option, what is the sources? Two books, R.D. Dixit. One is called R.D. Dixit, Upper Dixit. That's important. Okay, one is R.D. Dixit and second is Sudipto Adhikari. Okay, one is just, one is R.D. Dixit and second is what called Sudipto Adhikari even refer to textbooks. Very important, read it. Okay. If a general human geography group of publication made easy series is okay. That means group of publication. Group of publication, social economic geography. As a just a novel, you must read. But for economic geography, just go with the Madhya Kusin textbook. Okay where you read uh, economic aspects like agriculture, industries, resources, trade, and the problems associated with that, and measurement of it. So, population and settlement geography, the sources is the Madhya only, work will be done. Okay, for, for population and settlement geography, textbook, same textbook, not separate textbook. One textbook can call this human geography by so in that textbook, economic geography, population settlement is given. How do you read that? Okay. Apart, if you want to go with the settlement geography, Siddhartha, you can also can refer. Okay. Okay. Siddhartha's settlement geography. That was a good source. So regional planning models and theories. So regional one book on Puri used to come. RC. So that's a regional planning. And model theories and laws in human geography, separate uh, textbooks is given by Madhya Hussain. Separate 
get text by Maji Dosa. Question on models and physics. Even the class notes for the human geography you should refer to. That will be important for everything. And do the value addition if any current. So apart from the separate notes, class notes, you know, certain material has to be updated with current affairs too. Now, for the paper two, Indian geography, again 10 minutes, physical setting, resources, agriculture, industries, transport, communication, cultural settings, settlement, planning, political aspect, and compulsory issue, and one compulsory map portion. So, what are the sources for Indian geography? For Indian geography, one textbook I want to say, and rest is the current affairs. One is of call okay one textbooks here Look. indian geography by dr the textbooks so when you are purchasing textbook and reading it how to read it okay. just page by page or as for these topics given in the syllabus read page by page and and this is one point and point number two is uh, after reading, go through the past year question papers and the possible question bank in every topic which has been given by me. Refer to that and try to attempt these questions. So you need not to make note making, you just do the answer writing practice. Okay, and better answer writing will give you better result. So apart from this DR Kullo, we have to defer current affairs also because Indian geography, a lot of updates on current affairs used to come. Okay. Advanced to the value addition. Okay, do value addition in these notes. Okay, this is agriculture or industries or transport or or population settlement. People planning to do it. So no need for any textbooks. Here the magazines will help you out. What magazines you should refer? What magazine you should refer it for the geography? Already, whatever the next magazines you are covering, covering that is sufficient and easily really downs to what down to earth is one. Second is geography and you, geography and you. This is for environment and the rest of the other aspects of geography will cover from that. So monthly magazines, even one magazine for rural development comes, you can write essays also through so chitras and yoji. The economic geography, some angles also covered at Yojana, but in Kuru Chitra only for rural development. Okay, so if you don't purchase Kuru Chitra, it does not create a difference. But Yojana will be helping you out in essay writing also. Please go through this too. In the class notes, the last one compulsory question in the Indian geography camp is a map question. Which question? Compulsory map question is there. You have attempted the 10 marker question. Okay, and so you have to attend it. So there are you can prepare map along with the topics. And the class will be doing so the population maps, development map, industrial mapping, mineral resource mapping, all tourist destination places, all would be in the news. Okay. Along with the topics prepared when you are doing. The second method is separately you make a question. Our map uh, file, or you can get the Indian maps, or you can draw the Indian map. And when you able to do this, create a, a topic by topic, or which is in the news space. So one along the topic, second is news based mapping server. So two types of map questions arise along with the topic, topic centering, which you are covering, and news based. Okay. In the end, I will be doing mapping, so that will be copying that. So the source for mapping is the uh, color is self sufficient for many of the traditional topics. But the news based uh, things, I think the news itself, whenever the news comes, plot on Indian map side, the okay, Indian map, you will generate within the class also or on your own also you can generate. You want to read a textbook or of a map plotting. Uh, is uh, just have one atlas which you already are having it. Second point is for map of India, 
one book by one of my friend is there called Prem Patel. We are roommates in Delhi. Once, so he is also wrote one textbook. You can refer that also. Map, okay. Mapping of India by Prem Patel. So books and references for paper one, paper two is this. first before starting with paper in details. First, go through the basic books. Basic books are NCERT textbooks for 11th standard to 12th standard two. So for the 11th standard, talked about the paper one, it will be useful like fundamentals of physical geography 11th standard and the physical environment for the 11th standard. Okay, so this is okay. This is a physical environment 11th standard for the human part. Fundamentals of human geography 12th standard. So this is paper. Paper one, not physical geography. This is required for. If you look at this. This is required for India geography as well as human geography section B. Eleventh in standard. There are two two textbooks purchased both. Okay, new edition. That be which editions? New uh, editions on textbooks of eleventh standard two and twelfth standard two. It will help you in physical geography. As well as in human geography, as well as Indian art, physical and human too. One G C Leong is there for college book called a certificate physical and <coughs> human ge geography by G C Leong or watching Leong or Atlas. These are must read textbooks, and these textbooks are not only in optional; is required in what part G S geography part also. So before starting the optional section, this is an expected uh, uh, that you have gone through this. Not all the textbooks before starting the physical part, at least physical geography textbooks get completed. And before starting the human geography, complete the human geography textbook. I am not talking from six till ten, only eleven and twelve standard in CRT is the focus point. Always in the class uh, or when you are reading geography things, whenever place comes, when your mind is not able to depict that place. Plot on the world map. See and plot. So use the student Oxford uh, or, or Oxford School Atlas ones. These are books. Some of the textbooks are advanced book. Here you need not to read line by line. You have to read up and make your notes if you want to update. So everything is given by me. So here is read according to the syllabus. Averages. Not line by line, like previous book, according to the syllabus or the question or the topic, you have to search in these textbooks. Topic wise, you have to read, and topic is as for the syllabus or whatever the question you are attempting. So all which you already know, like all the five textbooks of physical geography by seven sixty, like geomorphology, oceanography, climatology, environmental geography, biology, all by seven sixty. Indian geography by T R, Kulo human geography by Majidusen, models and theories by Majidusen, and geographical thought by R D Dipchit and so Dipta Adhikari, isn't it not? So for settlement geography, K Siddhartha you can refer. Okay, guys. So testimony is for geomorphology optional papers I already given to you because every year more than three thousand five hundred people are appearing. Out of the 10,000, 12,000 people, so 30% of the total aspirant is from geography option. I think it will be highly lucrative to choose geography option. And one more data is I want to show the toppers, first rankers come from geography option, like 98 Devesh Kumar, okay, 2002 Alok Ranjan Cha, 2003 S Nagarajan, 2014 Ira Singhal, all stood rank one. The recent years is like Ira Singhal in 2014, like 18 Binay Ahmed. Third, Pratham Kausik. Fifth, Ayushna. Seventh, okay, Swamya Pandey. Fourth, Swetha Chauhan. Eighth, uh, Atul J. Thirteen, okay, and so on. There are many students who might also make it. So please join the course and complete it in time. Best of luck, all of you. Thank you.